So Elementor have just released a brand new plugin. It's called Alley, and it is what we call an accessibility plugin. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to work with both the free version and then the paid version of the plugin. But first things first, you might be wondering what exactly is an accessibility plugin? Well, it's simply a plugin that's meant to make your site and the contents on your site more accessible to users with disabilities. Now, I know what you might be thinking. I mean, how many people out there do have disabilities in the minority? Well, you might be shocked because I was shocked myself, but it turns out that about 16% of the global population do have some form of disability, and then 2.5 billion people worldwide do use assistive technology. This is all from the WHO. So think about it, okay? It's possible that your site, your website, may already have to have these features enabled either by law or by compliance or something like that. But forget about that, okay? What about the fact that if you do have this plugin enabled on your site, you will be opening up your business to potentially millions of people. Just imagine the number of disabled users who may want to patronize your business, who may want to pay for your products, pay for your service, read your content, but because they have a disability, they're unable to do so. This plugin will enable them to be able to access your site. If you're still wondering what exactly are these features, let me show you, okay? As an example, users will be able to make the text a lot bigger on your site. So users with very poor eyesight, they'll have access to this feature. What about users who have issues with like a white background or a black background? They can come in here, change the contrast to suit their eyesight. They can even go grayscale. They can even choose to pause animations or even like highlight links. Like the number of features on this plugin is insane. And the best part is that with the free version, you're actually gonna have access to about 15 features that will make your site a whole lot more accessible. So what I'm gonna do in this video is first of all, I'm gonna walk you through the, the free version of the plugin. You can try it out first of all, and then later on, I'll show you how to work with the paid version. Now, this is the free version in here. You can uh, activate it on one single website. It will allow you to have 10,000 visitors per month using the particular widget and then you will have 15 features, you will have access to an accessibility statement, and then of course you can also customize how the uh, icon is gonna look like. However, with the paid versions, these now differ. You can go either with $4.99 uh, per month, $9.99 per month, or $19.99. So in here, you can see the additional features that you're gonna have. However, the main advantage of going with the paid version of the plugin is that you will have access to additional features like the screen reader, where basically the plugin will read out the contents on your, on your website, perfect for users with very poor eyesight or blind users, and then also the accessibility uh, tracker. Basically, you will be able to keep track of what features your users are making use of the most. Think of it like analytics. So that way, you will now know which features to either keep on your site or simply disable because no one is actually using them. So again, I'm gonna show you how to work with the free version, first of all, and then later on towards the end, I'll show you how to work with the paid version. Let me just say one thing real quick. If you do decide to work with the paid version of the plugin, I am an affiliate for Elementor, meaning that if you decide to buy the paid version using my link, which I'll put in the description box below, I will get a very small commission. So it's a great way to support me and support what I'm doing here on this channel. So without wasting any more time, let me show you how to work with Ali, the Elementor Accessibility Plugin. All right, so I have already gone ahead to install and then activate the Ali plugin, as you can see. So the first thing we need to do is to click on the link right here. And we're gonna to have to connect our Elementor account with the plugin. So right now you will see this pop-up box. So you're gonna click on get started. And now you will have the prompts to link your Elementor account uh, with your website. So as you can see right now, it's redirecting me to my Elementor account. So I'm gonna go ahead right now and log in. So I've logged in already and now I'll have to connect Ali to my account. So I'm going to uncheck the box in here, click on approve and connect. And this should take a few seconds and there you go. So now we have successfully connected our Ali 
our plugin with our Elementor account. So right off the bat, you do have four main uh, sections. The first one will deal with the actual design of the alley icon. Right now, let me show you what it looks like from the front end. So it's going to be right here. As you can see, this is the default. You click in there and now the user will have all kinds of uh, options to modify how the content would look like. But let's go back. So the first thing you can do basically is to choose your style of icon. This is going to be the default. You do have other options in here as well. Or you could choose to add your own custom icon by simply clicking on the link right here. And then you can choose the size as well. You can also choose the color. I'm going to go with something a little bit green right here. And then the corner radius, of course, is to make it either circular or a square. I'm just going to go with the default. And now for the position, the default is going to be on the bottom right hand corner. All right. But then you can change this to the top center if you want to the bottom center. But in most cases, I would highly recommend that you go with the bottom right. Unless, of course, you do have a very special kind of design on your uh, front end. So I'm going to go with the bottom right. And then, of course, you can also uh, change the exact position by a few pixels to the left or the right. You can simply click in here and then adjust to your heart's uh, content. And then there is also the, the option to either uh, hide on mobile or hide on desktop. Hiding on desktop doesn't make much, that much sense to me. I think you should keep it on desktop. Uh, for mobile, it might make sense depending on how your web design is. So if you do need to hide the icon on mobile, you can simply come in here and then uh, check that. And that's going to be it for the design. I'm going to go ahead right now, save my changes. Okay, and now let's go to arguably the most important part of the plugin, and that's going to be the capabilities. Now, by default, you're going to have access to all of these features. In fact, let me show you how it looks like right now. If I clicked on the alley link right now, our users, they can make the text a lot bigger. You can see now it's 1.25 times larger. They can click again now, it's 1.5 times, 1.75 times, and so on. They can go with a bigger line height. They can even go with the gray scale. Look at that. That's actually very, very uh, interesting. And then they can also go with a contrast where you will have like a dark background. And then they can switch over to a light background, or vice versa, depending on what uh, colors you're using on your site. And then they can hide images and so on. They can even highlight the links, which I th think is actually very, very interesting. So users are going to have access to all these features. And a question you might have here is, okay, Alex, all these features are cool, but do we have to enable all of them? Or are there certain features that we can disable? Now, if you're working with the paid version of the plugin, and I'm going to show you later how to do this, uh, it's going to be very, very easy for you to know what to do because the paid version of the plugin will actually keep track of what particular features your users are working with. So all you need to do is to look at the stats and then the features that your users aren't working with, you can simply disable them. But what if you're working with the free version of the plugin that doesn't give you that access? Here's what I would recommend, okay? The first three over here, uh, I'm sorry, the first two, the bigger text, the bigger line height, these two are important. Text align, honestly, I can't think of any situations where a disabled user might need to align the text. I don't know. I could be wrong, but I will uncheck that one. And then readable font. Ideally, <laughs> you should be using a font that is readable on your site anyway. So I will disable this one as well. Uh, page structure. Most disabled users are not going to need this particular uh, feature. So I will disable that. The written mask, you can keep that one on. Hiding images. I don't know why they might want to do so. So I'm going to uncheck that one. Our uh, pause animations. Okay, we can keep that one. Highlight links, outline focus. Okay, we can keep all those ones. And then of course also our uh, grayscale and then contrast. So these are the ones that I would highly recommend that you leave enabled on your site. Unless of course you have certain reasons for disabling some of them or enabling the others that I have uh, disabled. Now down in here, 
you do have this very interesting feature called the skip to main content. Say for example, when the page loads, right? Maybe you want the page to load, let's say somewhere in the middle of your page. You can simply add the ID for that particular container uh, over here. However, in all honesty, I don't think you're gonna need to work with this particular uh, feature. So I'm not even gonna bother with it. So I'm gonna go ahead right now, save my changes. And now let's go over to the statement uh, feature. And this one is actually quite cool. So you may wanna write an accessibility statement to let users know that you're being very uh, inclusive. You care about disabled uh, users. So you can either create yours or you can have the plugin write one up for you. So you can cl simply click on, yes, I need one. And then you click in there and now you come in here to click on continue and then you can add the name of your site. So I'm just going to say, uh, Alexo, uh, industries. Okay. And then copy website, www.alexo.com, uh, Alexo, uh, 34 ads, gmail.com. Uh, okay. Something like that. And now I'll go ahead, create the statement and page. And there you go. Now it's actually available. And now you can also add the page to link your statement to. By default, the plugin will create a page called accessibility statement. In fact, if I was to go to my pages right now, uh, you will see it. It's right here, accessibility statement. You can view the page. And there it is right there. Of course, you can use your own uh, custom page as well. All you need to do is to simply come over here and then uh, link that page to your accessibility uh, statement. So because we now have the statement, uh, let me refresh my front page uh, over here. If I was to click on the alley link again, now you will see we have the accessibility statement right here. They click in there. And now that will take them to the accessibility statement uh, page. And that is pretty much it. So that's how to work with the free version of the plugin. Uh, of course, you also have the my account uh, link in here as well. So you can switch your account. You can change your subscription and so on. You can do so uh, all from here. But that's it for the free version of the plugin. Let me now show you how to work with the paid version of the plugin. So I'm gonna show you how to work with the paid version on a different site. This is actually the webmonkeyacademy.com, my own personal uh, private platform for WordPress courses. So I am working with the paid version and because of that, I now have access to some additional features like the screen reader, which I'll enable. Uh, sitemap, I don't work with it, so I'll leave that as it is. But then we also have the language selector and then we can also hide the alley by elemental logo. I will go ahead and hide it, save my changes. And now let me show you how it will look like on the front end. So the first thing I'll show you here is going to be the screen reader because this is easily one of the most powerful features in here. So check this out. I'm going to enable it. You're enabled. Reading pace, normal. One of three. Okay, so I hope you heard that. So, so the user can read in a normal uh, pace, a Both fast elements. pace or a slow elements. pace. So I'm gonna go back to read, read normal. Enabled. Reading pace, normal, <laughs> one of three. Okay, so I hope you heard that. So again, read normal, fast or slow. And now all the user needs to do is to simply highlight a paragraph or a section that they want the contents to be read out. So for example, look at this. I'm going to highlight this paragraph in here. So let's see. Instructor, Alexander Oena. I was first introduced to WordPress back in 2012 when I was trying to build my first web blog. Prior to discovering WordPress, meet your instructor, unlabeled element. Okay, so I hope you got that. <laughs> As you can see, it actually works. So. This is a very, very powerful accessibility feature for blind users or users who may just have very, very poor eyesight. 
and need the plugin to read out the contents to them. Honestly, just for this one single feature, it is worth the price you pay for the paid plugin. It is really, really cool. Now you can see we've also hidden the Alibi Elemental logo. And remember, we also enabled the language selector. So now by default, we do have English, but there's a ton of different languages in here that users can choose. So for example, they can choose French. So now everything in here is going to be French. Uh, they can go with Italiano and so on and so forth. Now, let me go back and show you one other very powerful feature, and that's going to be the analytics. You click in there and now look at this, okay? The first thing you wanna make sure is that you enable the track widget data. This is just for today. As an example, okay, I've been playing around with the plugin and you can see right now that the widget has been opened six times and we can see what particular features have been used the most. We have language selector at 66.67% uh, and then bigger text and screen reader are both at 16.67% and then you can see them right here, language selector was used four times, bigger text was used once, screen reader slow was used once as well. So you can see because the plugin has analytics. It keeps tracks of what features are being used. This will give you very reliable information as to which features you should either keep on your site or which features you probably just need to disable because no one is actually using them. So these are the two very powerful features that you will get with the paid version of the plugin. So there you have it. I've shown you exactly how to work with Ali, the accessibility plugin by Elementor. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, share the video with anyone who you feel might benefit from it. And of course, if you're new here to the channel, welcome to the web monkey. I do upload tutorials on WordPress web development. So if you do enjoy content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you are notified whenever I upload a new video. So once again, please, if you do decide to buy the paid version of Ali, please do use my affiliate link in the description box below. If you have any questions or comments, put them down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them as soon as I possibly can. Stay safe out there and I'll see you next time. Cheers.